hormones and your gut health. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford, a board certified fertility doctor, and today I'm talking all about hormones and gut health and the connection, specifically when it comes to estrogen. This channel exists so that you can learn more about your body, your health, your fertility, your hormones. So please subscribe, share, comment, like, and help me spread my message of empowerment and advocacy for your own body by learning the facts. One thing that's a hot topic right now is estrogen and learning about estrogen and your body and specifically what you can do that might impact your hormones. And many people are not aware of the really tight connection between your gut health and your estrogen. So let's talk about this. So your gut is made up of many cells. And I like to think about this as the lining of your intestine. The lining of your intestine, these cells are stacked next to each other and they're not supposed to allow many things to pass through. Let's think about a coffee filter. You think about a coffee filter, you put your coffee grounds in and the water brews over and you're supposed to get a pot of coffee without any of the grounds. Well, if the filter has holes in it or isn't working, you're going to get some of the coffee grounds into the coffee and it's not going to be very good. Well, inside your body, you can have something called increased gut permeability. People like to call this a leaky gut. But what this means is that the cells of your intestine start to get these gaps between them. And this is a direct response to inflammation, specifically chronic inflammation. And that localized inflammation in your gut, where do you think that comes from? the foods that you eat. So in this circumstance, the foods that you eat can worsen this gut permeability or this leaky gut. And then this has multiple different downstream effects. So one of these is that this can also impact what we call the gut microbiome. You might've heard of the microbiome. The gut has bacteria in it and they do a variety of different tasks. One thing that the gut microbiome does is there's an enzyme called beta-glucuronidase that actually processes estrogen. So estrogen is made in your body in different places. There's actually three different main types of estrogen. You have estrone, which we call E1, which is made from fat cells. You have estradiol or E2, the primary estrogen that we think about in our body, and this is made from our ovaries. And then we have estriol or E3, and this is a very specific estrogen made from the placenta in a pregnancy. But estrogen is metabolized in the liver. And so this does mean anything that impacts the liver can impact estrogen metabolism. But what that means for something to be metabolized is your body regulates after you've made estrogen, getting it out of your system and you excrete estrogen in your bile, your urine, and in your stool. So this enzyme beta-glucuronidase is actually very important in the metabolism of estrogen and helping you regulate the estrogen levels that are circulating in your bloodstream and the estrogen that is being excreted like it should through your stool. So when your gut microbiome is off, you will also see this alteration of your estrogen levels. And if you have a leaky gut, you're going to have an altered gut biome. The other thing that can impact the microbiome of the gut is going to be fiber. So we know that fiber is good for you. I think a lot of people have heard about fiber, but fiber is in these whole foods, these fruits and vegetables, and it's not gonna be in a lot of your processed and refined foods. So fiber does many things. It's actually not digested. So it helps bulk up your stool and it helps keep the ratio of the good and bad gut bacteria at the proper level. So when you are consuming food that doesn't have much fiber, in addition to having GI issues, like you have a higher chance of being constipated, you are also going to see that the gut microbiome is going to be shifted into the bad, and you're going to have increased inflammation inside that gut. So think about the microbiome of the gut directly associated with the foods you eat, the fiber content, and that gut permeability. And then this fiber works backwards to decrease inflammation. Inflammation versus the gut permeability and altered gut permeability is going to change that microbiome. And then you're going to have this even more altered estrogen metabolism. And I think this is important because sometimes we think, oh, I'm not in perimenopause or menopause. I don't need to worry about 
my estrogen level, that's not an issue. But if you want your hormones to function normally, and specifically if you want to be pregnant, we know that the gut microbiome is really important in this hormone regulation. There was a study done that looked at the gut microbiome and your rate of infertility and recurrent implantation failure and unexplained infertility. And what the study showed was that infertile women were more likely to have abnormal gut microbiome than fertile controls. And this was different gut microbiome profiles for implantation failure and for unexplained infertility. Really importantly is that the vaginal microbiome was, was normal in all of these circumstances. So abnormal gut bacteria doesn't mean abnormal vaginal bacteria. And I see patients asking and talking about the vaginal microbiome all the time. They want tests for it or vaginal probiotics and these things. But I think it's really important that this study is telling us the vaginal microbiome is likely less associated with infertility than the gut microbiome. And we need to be focusing more on changing the factors that impact that gut microbiome and impact us having a leaky gut. Well, what factors do contribute? So we already said processed foods, high sugars, artificial sweeteners, low fiber diet. Then there's a bunch of lifestyle factors that can increase your inflammation. So stress, lack of sleep, alcohol, environmental toxins, infections, and then there's just a certain level of genetics and age that can predispose somebody to be at a certain risk. How do you know if you have a leaky gut? Well, I think we all know the types of food that we eat, and so many of the signs of a leaky gut are things that many people experience daily, and they just chalk it up to be normal. Things like fatigue, sugar cravings, mood instability, depression, bloating, gas, constipation, heartburn, anxiety, overstimulation, headaches, acne. So this is a really wide range, but you can see the common thread here is that these are all tied towards inflammation. So what I want you to take away is that what you put in your body has multiple layers of impact. But when it comes to your hormones, we should not be so naive to think that the health of our gut doesn't impact the health of our hormones or our fertility. So things that cause inflammation in your intestinal tract can cause this leaky gut, they can worsen the gut microbiome, and then that can impact your estrogen metabolism. It also can directly impact your fertility. So this is just extra evidence to me that we should be focusing on the factors that we can control lots of fruits and vegetables, high fiber diet, things that are not processed or artificial, and at least control the factors you can to be in the best situation to have normal hormones and have the highest chance of getting pregnant if you're trying to conceive. All right, this is a very broad topic, so if you've got questions about this, please ask in the comments so we can address and do a follow-up. As always, appreciate you. Please subscribe and share, and you can get more information on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD or on the As A Woman podcast. Thanks, friends.